Hi everyone, we're back. Uh, Thursday, one o'clock, GG Inspire. Today's topic is don't shoot yourself in the foot since we all tend to do that so many times. Uh, thanks, Joel, you're awesome. <laughs> Um, okay, so Joel actually brought me a couple questions because she thought that, you know, there might be some good things that I can uh, see if maybe you guys might want to hear the answers to. So I'm going to invite a few people. Uh, let me see what I can do. I'm still trying to figure out Instagram and Facebook at the same time. Forgive me. Okay, good. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, what's going on? I've just booted myself out of where I was. Okay, don't want that. I want to be here. Okay, cool. So, how is everybody today? Let me know uh, where you're where you're uh, tuning in from. Would love to hear from you guys. Today's going to be a really exciting one uh, because we, I think, a lot of us tend to shoot ourselves in the foot and do some things that we probably shouldn't do and self sabotage. You know, some of those types of things that you guys might have. Um, you might have experienced in the past or you've seen have you ever seen somebody else doing that you've seen somebody shooting themselves in the foot and you can just kind of see it and you're like stop stop I just ah, uh -uh, don't do it you know but I think sometimes what happens is that we don't recognize it ourselves hey Erica hey Jerry hey Rosina um, hey Sharon hey Joel how are you um, so excited let's do this it's gonna be awesome so I know I've seen I've seen people shoot themselves in the foot where it's like kind of self sabotage, but they may not realize it. Uh, hey Maisie and hey Steve. Uh, okay, so but I think you guys might know times where it's kind of easier in hindsight. Like somebody told me once long ago that um, you're not able to see forward in hindsight, right? Hindsight is, is back, right? But so you can connect the dots backward and figure out like where you might have sabotaged yourself and where something happens that you made some type of mistake that you weren't planning on it or you were, you know, thinking that that was the right thing, but it was really somehow, you know, some inner conflict was was making you make choices that weren't in your best interest. So Steve, I'm so glad that you're joining us today. We've got lots of really cool stuff happening. It's going to be really good. Okay, so don't shoot yourself in the foot. Um, the other like words for that would be like self-loyalty, right? So be loyal to yourself. Now we're, we hear so many things, you know, across Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and whatever about being loyal to being loyal to others and you know always be a true friend and I saw one that was a long time ago that really really hit me it said never push a loyal person to the point that they don't care anymore and so that's in regards to relationships with other people but what about yourself are you being good to yourself are you being loyal to yourself so I found a lot of information on this online and it actually was really pretty cool uh, so I want to read you this one quote though it's from um, his, his name is uh, Rob White and he said, without the quality of self-loyalty, I cannot build a sturdy foundation upon which to launch a thousand versions of my unlimited potential. So of what, of, like, this kind of trips me out because the idea of the foundation upon which to launch a thousand versions of my unlimited potential. We talk so much about, especially on GG Inspire, about being entrepreneurs and taking things to the next level and exploding and having this incredible life, right? You always want these wonderful things, but if you're not loyal to yourself, you're not going to be able to reach and launch that unlimited potential that's within you, right? So we have to make sure and do that. Your potential is powerful stuff, so we have to focus on it. So I'm going to give you guys five, five little um, ideas of things that are important to help, to help you keep your self-loyalty together and, and be honest and true with yourself. Like, are you being honest with yourself? That's, that's one of the biggest ones, right? So number one is remember, remember who you are, but remember what you want, right? And go after it. So, you know, in your life, hey, Sharon, you're so cute. Um, and I would love for you guys to chime in and, and let us know, like, you know, in, in what capacity do you feel like being loyal to yourself is important? So how are you loyal to yourself? You know, in what way are you loyal to yourself? How do you take care of yourself? How do you give yourself the best, the best that you actually need, right? So remember what you want to go after it. There's, look, life is hard. You know, I was telling somebody the other day, uh, I think it was a, a friend of mine, I was in San Diego uh, for the, um, just for a day or two uh, to visit a few friends and, and, you know, work on some business stuff. And it was so funny because basically, like, I was telling her that, you know, life is too short and we have so many things. Life is hard. Like, things get in our way. And a lot of adults, like, you know, as you're in your, in your like, late teens and you're in your 20s and you're starting to, like, come up and start to think that you know everything, like, adults don't really let you in on the fact that life is flipping hard. 
right? There's a lot of challenges that come with it. There's a lot of burdens that come with it. And it, and it makes it so that as you get older and you're starting to do like, you want to get married, you want to have kids, you want to buy a house, you want to have like a great career, you want to have a great life. You have all these things that are in some ways burdensome, like problems that come upon you that you may not realize are actually going to happen when you're in your 20s. You think like life is super easy. So too many burdens. So we have so many burdens and they take our time and our focus and our distract us away from the things that we actually want. And so if we keep wanting to just be able to like coast through and like we kind of sit back and like hope everything's going to fall into our lap and we're going to be successful or we're going to have the life, the dream life that we want. It's not going to happen. It's going to, you're going to watch everybody else creating their dream life while you're sitting back thinking, man, I know it's going to happen for me. I know it's going to happen for me. No, you have to go get it. You have to go after it and make it reality, right? So give yourself a motivational pep talk when you're in that place where you're feeling sorry for yourself or you're like having a little pity party and you're like, man, it's, I'm bummed out. You know, I was telling them this morning, I said, I don't, you know, like I said the other day, I don't always feel like doing Gigi Inspire, but I have to tell you, like it inspires me and it makes me do the personal development and self growth to be able to give you guys something valuable. So it's important to me to be able to do that because it inspires me and I hope that it inspires you and I hope you guys get something out of it. But this is, you know, the kind of information that at the end of the day, people need and they want positivity in their lives and they want some solutions. And so they need to be reminded. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff all over the internet about, you know, personal development, growth, getting better. Hey, Lindsay, um, all these things that are that are happening, right? That all this information that's out there for us to get better, but we don't always use it. So sometimes it takes, you know, GG Inspire kind of knocking on your noggin to be able to come in and give you some of the stuff that's already out there, right? So, okay, so I, I want to share with you a couple more, right? So, so remember what you want and go after it. Don't sit by the sidelines and hope that it's going to happen for you because it, it won't. Nobody's going to come and, and hand you a bunch of stuff. Hey, Risha, no one's going to hand you a bunch of success. You need to go after it. You need to like pick, pick up your, your big girl and your big boy pants and you need to get on it and you need to get, get it taken care of. Okay? So give yourself that motivational pep talk or listen to a podcast or listen to something um, inspiring. You know, something like listen to some crazy workout music. You know, I, I'm going to talk about working out in, in a second. Um, maybe I'll just talk about it now, but, um, you're so sweet, Risha. Uh, so what I wanted to tell you guys is that, you know, my husband and I, Jason and I have been really talking about like getting in shape and getting better and, you know, taking, taking the, the, the disciplines that we need in our regular everyday lives and turning them into our business lives as well. Right. So how, you know, I told you guys months ago, Andy Frisella said something to me, you know, that really hit me he said, um, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So how does your car look? How does your house look? How does your office look, right? How, how's your body look, right? So you have to start taking advantage and, and getting on track with making sure that you take care of yourself in every area. So, you know, if we're going to be disciplined in business, then we need to be disciplined in fitness, right? And frankly, I want to be able to watch my daughters walk down the aisle. I want to see them get married. I want to play with my grandkids. And if you're always, you know, eating bad food, not exercising, stressed out, all those things, if those things are happening all the time, then you're not going to be able to live the healthy and long life that you want. So I was like, we have to make a change. And so I'm going after what I want, which is to be healthy and fit and higher energy, especially I've got this almost seven year old who wants to like run around all the time, you know, and I need to be able to keep up with her. So we took that step and we're being disciplined in that regard. Uh, but it's hard, you know, like he's not a morning person. I'm much more of a morning person. He'll, um, I know I throw him under the bus all the time, but he doesn't really like to work out in the morning, but that's like the best time to do it because your body needs that. And it, and for me, I like to be able to accomplish something right out of the gate. So I try to make my bed in the morning every day and I get up and I want to work out because I want to feel like I did something already. So then it's just, it's just as the day goes on, it's one more victory I'm looking for. One more, one more, one more. And so it's going after what I want, which is ultimately the best time to be able to create the life that I want, but I have to be able to do it one step at a time. And so the, the, do I have challenges sometimes? Do I sometimes want to sleep in? Absolutely. Do I sleep in sometimes? Yes, I do. But most of the time I'm moving forward and I'm taking accountability for my body and for my actions because I want to be better. I want to get better and I want to have a great life. So it's not easy, okay? Success is not convenient. It never will be, okay? Success is not convenient. All right, stand by your principles. 
So each person has a belief principle and they have belief systems that are laid out to them by their parents, by their religion, by their environment, whatever it is, but everybody's different. Okay, so what I always talk about is that you have to draw your line in the sand. Where is your line in the sand? Like, are you okay with, you know, doing things a certain way? Or are you okay with, you know, doing things that are, you know, maybe not so ethical? You know, is it like, well, you know, let, let me let me give you another example. Like, um, no, I'm not allowed to have, like right now I'm on this super strict diet and I'm not supposed to eat like, you know, almost any carbs, right? So, hey, Ardena. Uh, so, but... Is it okay for, you know, if nobody's looking for me to say, well, you know, I guess one little cupcake won't hurt or one little piece of pizza won't hurt. No, not really. I mean, I'm really lying to myself. If I have a guideline that I set out, and unless I have a cheat day or something like that, which on this diet I don't, which drives me insane. But unless I have that, like I, I'm dancing on, I'm, I'm lying to myself. You know what I mean? I'm giving myself and I'm forgiving myself, allowing myself to do something that I shouldn't be doing and it's cheating, right? So are you okay with cheating? Where's the line in the sand, right? And it may not seem like that big of a deal, but you know that you bent the rules, right? So you have to kind of figure out like within you how you treat people or your work ethics, like where's your line in the sand? Will you be able to live or will your family be able to live with the decisions that you made? Now, when we're talking about a little cupcake, yeah, it's not gonna you know, be anything monumental, but the choices that you make in life affect you and they affect your family. So if you're doing that there, are you doing that in business? Are you doing that with other things, right? So you just have to be mindful of what's going on. Be loyal to yourself. Do and keep the promises that you make to yourself. That builds your confidence. So if you say, I'm not going to have any cupcakes for the next 30 days, then don't have any cupcakes for the next 30 days and continue to remind yourself. And maybe even give yourself a reward at the end of the day. You look, if you're, after 30 days you don't have any cupcakes and you like want to chow down on 10 of them, hey, that's your prerogative, right? But you kept your promise to yourself is the point, right? Okay, uh, remember who you are, okay? I think this is a really important one, and I think we forget because we're so focused on trying to do right by other people that we forget to do right by ourselves, you know? And again, it's part of the, the workout thing is I have to do right by myself and take care of myself before I'm going to be able to take care of these girls, right? Hey, Jason, thanks for joining um, we get bogged down with the daily stresses of life, and so we lose sight of who we are. We lose sight of what's important to us. We we end up focusing on everybody else, and then we come back and we realize, oh my gosh, I didn't spend any time, you know, taking care of what I needed to take care of at the end of the day. So, be true to who you are. Uh, remain loyal to your your core needs and desires. Right. So if you are like I. Um, Gosh, I can give you guys tons of examples. Maybe you guys could give me some of your examples. Hey, Latanya, I didn't, I didn't see you uh, to join in there. Um, thanks for joining us. So, um, give us some of, of the things that that you have to have every day. Oh, I almost lost Instagram. Instagram almost fell off. Okay, hold on a second. Almost lost you. Oh, I can see Mom Boss in the background. Can you guys see that? Oh, let me fix this. All right, better, sturdy. Okay. So, what are some of the things that you have to have every single day? Like, I know that I need to drink a ton of water. I know that I need to get a minimum of uh, five hours of sleep. Now, that five hours used to be like eight. Hey, Ariel, I'm most excited. My little girl's watching too. Um, so I used to have a have to have like six or seven hours of sleep for sure. Hey, Lisa. Uh, but now, like five hours is kind of like my tipping point. It was so funny. I was talking with a friend of mine. Um, and I don't know if I can name her. She might get mad. But I was in San Diego and I was sitting with her and we were having dinner and she's like, oh my gosh. She's like, I have to get eight hours of sleep. And I was like, girl, like that was like for me to having to get eight hours of sleep. That was like probably I feel like almost 10 years ago because now having kids like you just don't have the option. Right. So there's certain things that I have to do. Um, core needs and desires. They if you um, maybe you want to read at night, maybe you need 15 minutes of like peace and quiet where like nobody's, you know, talking to you, asking you questions, you know, anything, and you know, asking for advice, any of that stuff. You have to be able to figure out what that is and you've got to stick to it because those are the things that make a difference for you so that when you're, when you're feeling stressed, it's oftentimes it's because you haven't met that, that core need or that desire that you needed to be able to feel normal and feel together, right? So you have to focus on those things, but factor them in. If you're like, oh my gosh, I get so starving and then I end up eating junk food. Well, you need a plan. Maybe you need 15 minutes at night to make sure that your diet's on point and you have a little bit of a plan. 
My husband and I are talking about it all the time. He's like, my trainer, the trainer says that we, that he needs to eat more. I need to eat less. Yeah, obviously, right? He wants to bulk up. And he's like, well, I, I didn't eat all day. I'm like, well, then at the end of the night, you need to plan for it. You need to figure out and make sure that you've got it all together. If these things are important to you, then you've got to make them happen, right? So remember who you are and um, stay, stay focused, right? And remain loyal to your likes and dislikes. You know, when you feel in your gut that something's not right, you know, I had somebody come to me the other day and wants to do some type of business transaction. And, you know, I, I walked away from it feeling like, you know, I just don't feel like in my gut, I feel comfortable doing this. And so at the end of the day, like, I don't want to do anything that I don't, that, that doesn't feel or, or sit right with me. So follow your gut. Your gut is like your instincts are telling you what to do and what not to do. Hey, Joel, how are you? Um, Sharon. Okay. So workout after a long day helps me overcome the stress accumulated and deal better with other issues. I agree a hundred percent. You know, I'm a much more positive person when I'm working out and it's oftentimes like if there's stress, it kind of like I, I let it all go and I'm able to focus a hundred percent on myself, like my breathing, my muscles, my energy, like all that stuff is, is really, really important. And so if we can do what's best for us, maybe it's taking a walk, maybe it's, you know, playing with your dog, like whatever it is, do it so that you can stay focused and in the right headspace to be able to create what you want for your life. Because there's a lot of crap going on all the time. And that that's one thing that's never going to change. You're always going to have adversity and things that happen to you. But you have to find a way to center yourself so you can move forward in a positive direction. Okay? Um, be honest about your vices. So this is a really important one, I think, because... Uh, be honest with yourself instead of trying to escape reality, okay? So many of us, um, we, we drink, we smoke, we this, we that, whatever it is, like what's your vice? Sometimes, you know, people's vices might just be television. They're like, oh man, I just love to watch old Friends reruns or old Sex in the City reruns. And every time I ever want to watch Sex in the City, my husband's like the massive eye roll. Um, anyway, um, thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, we got to listen to our own intuition for sure. Uh, so what I found is that, you know, if we are, sometimes we get a little bit lazy, right? So this guy talks about, um, sometimes our egos and our, our laziness kind of get in the way of our, our honesty, right? So we're not necessarily honest with ourselves all the way. And so we, um, we're like, oh, it's not that big of a deal for me to have that, you know, that food that I shouldn't be eating or yeah, it's okay for me to have a, you know, an extra couple drinks because, you know, I, I worked out really hard yesterday. But if it's not in your plan, then you really shouldn't be doing it, right? So you've got to be honest with yourself about what's going on. Um, and then the other thing is that you have to, the last thing is that you have to forgive yourself. You have to stop beating yourself up, okay? We're not perfect. You're going to continue to not be perfect, okay? Um, like you, we beat ourselves up for, for not doing something right or we missed the mark. We didn't get that deal. Um, thank you, Joel. Mom boss, that's right. Um, Mom boss has got a lot loaded in it. But, you know, at the end of the day, we have to make sure we're going to have shame, guilt, depression, feeling bad about certain things. But I was telling somebody the other day, look, so it's like a wave, right? So you have the, you have the trough and then you have the crest of the wave. How long are you going to stay in the trough, right? Now, we're all going to experience that. Life is up and down. It's always going to be up and down, but how long are you going to stay in the bottom of that wave or are you going to work yourself out of it? What I found oh, in my experience, because I've had some, some pretty crazy bouts with like down and um, I wouldn't say depression because it felt like depression, but I wouldn't say that it's like, it's not clinical depression at all. But I think, you know, when I was younger, I used to think like, I don't get how people get depressed. Like just, you know, turn your head and start thinking about something else. It's that simple. But sometimes it's not that easy, right? You get down in a in a rut and you kind of get into what's called like circular thinking and you're like going around and around thinking about the situation and, and how upset you are and how it's not the way that you wanted it to be. And there's a, a few things that you have to do to get yourself out of it. One, you know, sometimes when people are trying to talk to you, you're not trying to listen because you're like, I want to be depressed, even though you're not saying that out loud. You know, when they're trying to solve your problem, you're like, yeah, but things are awful and I'm just so upset and I'm not making enough money or I'm not this or I'm not that, right? I'm not worth the weight that I want to be or I'm not happy with my, you know, I don't have anybody. I, I want a spouse. I want a partner. I want a date, whatever, right? So whatever it is that you're depressed about and people try to pull you out of it and you're like, no, no, it's so bad. It's so much worse than your situation. But what happens is you actually have to like literally change your physiology. You have to get up, 
move around, do something different, and you have to change your focus. So when I was saying that years ago, I thought it was so simple. It's true. You have to literally change your focus and start thinking about something else, thinking about something else that makes you positive, thinking about something else that makes you excited, thinking about something that makes you grateful, because you cannot be grateful and depressed in the same second. It won't happen, right? So when you're depressed, you have to continuously and find a way to remind yourself of what you're grateful for what you're excited about. Are you noticing a theme? I keep talking about this all the time. Oh, Steven, you're perfect. I know. Um, Christine, wow, I haven't seen you since high school, girl. Um, thanks for joining us. So yeah, I know you're perfect, Steven. You got it all. You got it all down. We don't have to worry about you. Um, but, you know, stay in a high vibration state. So get up, jump around, you know, do something to be able to move you past it. But you have to let go of some of those things. You can beat yourself up or you can forgive yourself and move on and Find ways to do it better. Why don't you ask yourself, how could I have made that situation better? How could I have improved it so that I didn't get into a place where I was so upset about what happened, right? So I, I appreciate you guys because this is um, this is kind of a topic that I think that a lot of people <clears throat> skirt over. We talk so much about other people, but we don't necessarily talk about ourselves. Okay, so I'm going to um, ask a couple questions. You guys feel free to ask me any questions that you like. That would be great. Um, I made some decisions recently and I feel I shot myself in the foot. How can I turn things around? Well, you know, the past is in the past. So now it's in your rear, view, your rear view mirror. So you're not able to change the decisions that you made. Potentially, right? If you have an opportunity to go back and change some of those things, why not try it, right? Exactly, Lindsay, right? Sometimes there's nothing you could have done differently. Maybe you're in a position now that you have to move forward and you have to make the best of a bad situation, right? So um, what can, first of all, what can I do to make sure that that doesn't happen again, right? And what is it that led me to that? Like, even if you want to go deeper and figure out why did I, or how did I shoot myself in the foot? Was it, you know, was it anything that was like self-deprecating in my mind that I was telling myself, I sh you know, maybe I'm not worthy or I don't deserve it or something like that. And then you, um, subconsciously did that. Like, this is kind of deeper stuff, but sometimes you kind of get into the point where you make mistakes that are, um, you're kind of in distress, you're in a distress pattern, and you make mistakes, um, and they lead to, you know, a situation that you don't want. So you kind of have to figure out what happened, but the other thing is maybe you need to go have a conversation with someone. Maybe you need to, like, readdress what's going on so that you can turn it around, right? And if you get an opportunity to be able to handle those situations differently, what are you doing, right? So so I would, you know, depending, on, we can talk about more specific situations offline, but I would say, you know, take an assessment of what happened and then try and figure out how can we change it or how can I change it moving forward, okay? Um, what do you find the majority of entrepreneurs do to show, shoot themselves in the foot? Um, well, I would say uh, lack of activity. I would say that, you know, we get so focused on maybe like one or two deals that's going to go through or two new, two or three new clients that, are, that we're going to get. And we're so focused on making those happen that we forget to build the pipeline. We forget how we got to that in the first place. We forgot that there was a massive amount of activity that led to it. And every entrepreneur and every business is different, but the um, there's the marketing side of things, there's the sales side of things, and there's the, the delivery, right? All of those things work together. And so sometimes what happens is when you're so focused on the sale or you know that part of it, the middle part of it, then you forget about the marketing which led to that in the first place. And so you have to find ways. I would say that time management is a super important thing to make sure that you're focusing enough on all of those things every day. And so I would say that entrepreneurs oftentimes get most focused on one or two things and they leave a lot of things to the wayside. So you have to find a way, when you're an entrepreneur and you're just in the beginning, you wear every hat, right? You wear sales and delivery and marketing and follow up and everything, you wear all those hats. And so you have to do time management to make sure that you have an ample amount of time and an ample amount of your focus to be able to do all the things that you need to do until you get to the point where you're doing those things and you know how to operate them well enough that you can actually hire someone to handle some of those things for you, but you still need to know the fundamentals, right? So that's what I would say. Okay, um, hope that helps. Have you ever shot yourself in the foot at what happened? Oh my gosh, you know, Personally, I feel like, you know, in uh, 10, almost 11 years in business, I shot myself in the foot multiple times, like a lot, okay? I have, you know, gotten to the point where like things were clicking on all cylinders 
and you know everything was really going great and then somehow I got distracted and I ignored it instead of giving the energy to um, to be able to produce more you know I sat back and found some reason why I needed to be you know focusing on other things you know it's a it's this distraction factor you know the human mind has an incredible capacity to distract itself and so sometimes when you're in that self-sabotage mode even though you don't know it right you could be pushing yourself to do something that is not productive for you and so you think oh i need to stand back i need to watch i need to manage right instead of you know keeping your foot on the gas and you know getting it to the point where there's so much activity that it's just you know you're not even able to handle it all yourself so I, I would say that I, I've done a lot of that, a lot of getting distracted, a lot of, um, oh, I'm not able to do that because I have kids or, I, you know, I've, I'm not able to do that because I have such and such. There's always a reason. There's always an excuse not to do something. What I found is that I've been pretty productive and even me, I still beat myself up. I could have done more. I could have done more. Right. So I think that there's there's time management. Um, there's a. Uh, Fear. I think fear is a big one. That's the one that you that people oftentimes utilize to shoot themselves in the foot. They're fearful of the situation. They're fearful of the result. They're fearful fearful of their skill level to be able to do it. So that they go, oh, I'm not able to do it, and then they miraculously like, oh, that person doesn't answer the phone anymore, or I'm going to have so and so call, and so and so hasn't called me back, and then they forget about it. So there's any number of things. You know, I I have just as many fears, just as many doubts. Just as many distractions, time management issues, any of these types of things that I'm talking to you, you guys about, I feel like I'm, I'm utilizing this as a platform to share with you some of the things that I've been through because I know that if I'm doing it, then I know other people are doing it too, okay? So I hope that helps you. Um, maybe uh, I'll answer some of those questions more directly, uh, DM, and I'll give you guys more specifics. Um, sometimes I think I'm loyal to a fault. This is an interesting one. Uh, my loyalty is to my family. But every time I help family in my business, it comes back to bite me. Should I stop doing business with them? It always ends up with a falling out of what I did or didn't do. You know, um, if you're starting to notice a pattern, um, I think you need to do what we call a pattern interrupt. And so you need to stop doing what you're doing. If it falls into a pattern that is not healthy, like I was just saying before, if you're finding something happens and you're not um, happy with the result, then you need to change what you're doing or you need to change the situation in which has happened. So is it a specific family member or is it all the family? Are you like the, the person that gets in trouble for X, Y, Z, but you know, it's, it's, um, is that happening over and over again? Right? So you kind of have to assess what were the situations and kind of figure out like what happened in those scenarios and was it me or how could I have done things differently? And you just need to stop because whatever it is that you're doing, if you're not getting, if you're trying to do something to help and it's not being received the right way or they're not appreciating what you're bringing to the table, well, then maybe we have to look at doing things differently because helping family and helping others should feel good. It shouldn't feel like a burden. You shouldn't be fearful that there's going to be backlash. It should come from a good, honest, like full hearted place and you should feel fulfilled at the end of it, not regretful. Right. So, you know, I don't know the exact situation, but I would tell you like, you know, you kind of have to reassess what's happening and who's accepting the help from you. And if that's a good thing, maybe that's, you know, a person or a group of people that you don't want to help in that capacity. Maybe you're going to help in other ways. Uh, but as far as business goes, depending on what it is, maybe you want to steer clear of that. And that's okay, right? That's not a bad thing. It's just a matter of making sure that you do what's right for you and also your family because you need, nobody needs any added aggravation. We got tons of it to go around. I'm sure anybody can share with you some of their aggravation, but you've got other stuff besides that. Um, okay, so last question, please, if anybody has any others, I want to make sure that you guys get a chance to, to ask them. Um, when you face disloyalty, how do you move forward without falling into anger that results from the betrayal of someone that you trusted? That's kind of an interesting thing. So we're talking not about, you know, disloyalty to yourself, right? Um, we're talking about disloyalty from someone else. So, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty sensitive person. So when I feel like somebody has been disloyal, it's, it's really hard for me because I love really hard. I love really hard on people and I would do anything for them. And when I feel like when people are disloyal, it hurts me. Hey, Dan, um, it hurts me. But, you know, you have to remember in what capacity is it? Is this a business capacity or is it personal, right? <coughs> because if it's personal, 
then I guess you can take it to heart, but you also have to think about, you know, what led up to it. Did I see signs that this could have happened before, right? Was I just ignoring those signs because I wanted to be happy about it or I wanted to just kind of, hey, Socorro, we need to talk. I was actually just talking uh, about you uh, yesterday. So, um, you know, are, were you in a situation that, that you might have let something happen or let something slide that um, didn't prevent that from, from getting to a worse situation, right? I don't know if it did. Um, but when, when I've faced disloyalty, um, it's it's really tough for me because, you know, when, when you love wholeheartedly and somebody maybe um, you feel like you've been betrayed, it's tough. And it, it's kind of, it's a wound that takes time to, I think, heal. But you also have to think about, like, if you're on the healing process. Now, if you're in the depressed place or if you're in the, what is it, the trough of the wave uh, and you're thinking about how bummed you are and how much it affected you, like, yes, you're going to have to think about that stuff and maybe you're going to have to process it for a certain amount of time. But at a certain point, you have to start realizing, you know what, this is not serving me. Being depressed and thinking about what happened, what's in the rear view mirror, isn't serving me anymore. So I need to go up and push to the next level and try to get back to the top of the wave. So how can I have improved that? What could I have done differently? You know, like you can ask yourself those questions, but you have to be going in a positive direction. So it's, you're going to be, sometimes you're going to be angry. You know, somebody, sometimes people will just screw you over just because, you know, hey, Irma. Um, sometimes they'll just screw you over just because, you know, that's the, the way that they are. But you have to realize that you are only in control of you. You can control your attitude, you can tr control how you deal with things, and you can tr control your activity. So I would say if you're unhappy with what happened, um, you have to own your part of it. If you get an opportunity to have a conversation with that person, great. If not, then you're just going to have to own it, figure out, figure it out, and how to move forward, you know, to be your best you. That's, that's what it comes down to. Okay, so anger and resentment, negativity, you can hold on to that, but it's going to make you sick. It's going to make you sick. It's going to make things harder for you to progress. So the faster that you can get back to a positive place where you're thinking about good vibrations and stuff like that, that's going to take you to the next level. And it's going to, like I said, leave that behind you and you can move, keep moving forward. So I hope that helps you guys. You know, if you have any more questions, feel free. Um, I love to answer the questions after if you think of more. Right, and I'm happy. I'm happy to do that. So, uh, but I don't want to keep you guys on too long. I appreciate all of you guys getting on. This is so fun. I had a good GG inspired today. Um, and please, if you guys want to message me, if there's topics that you'd like to hear, you know, please do that, and we can uh, go through. We can go get get a little bit more Q and A. Uh, and please, you know, like this, share it, you know, put it out there because there are other entrepreneurs, other people that are looking for some positivity. They're looking for brightness in their lives, and they're not getting a lot of it. So I would definitely appreciate it. We're trying to get as many views as we can out there. And uh, we just appreciate you guys and want to be able to do all we can to make people's lives a little bit brighter and a little bit better. So please go out there and uh, be inspired to have a great life.